So far we've covered conduction and convection heat transfer, and next we're going to talk about radiation. Radiative heat transfer is a mode of energy transfer where the energy is transported via electromagnetic waves, and thermal radiation covers a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum from about 0.1 to 100 microns. Fluent is used for numerous applications that involve radiation, and that includes but is not limited to solar loading, headlight simulations, glass furnace simulations. For radiation in semi-transparent bodies, or in certain gases like combustion products, radiation is a volumetric phenomenon because emissions escape from within the bodies. On the other hand, for opaque bodies, radiation is essentially a surface phenomena because there nearly all emissions are absorbed within the body. Conventional wisdom says that radiation needs to be included when temperatures are high. And that's usually true, but there is a more precise way that you can estimate whether your simulation needs to include radiation. You can estimate a representative value for the radiative heat flux using the expression here, where you have the maximum and minimum temperatures in the system, sigma is the Stefan-Boltzmann constant, epsilon is the emissivity of your surfaces, and your temperatures are raised to the fourth power. Similarly, you can make an estimate of the convective heat flux, or you could use the conductive heat flux if that's appropriate, and then compare the two values. If the radiative flux is the same order of magnitude as the convective or conductive heat transfer rate, then you want to account for radiation effects. This is usually true at high temperatures, but depending on the application, it can also be true at lower temperatures. So you should always do this estimate in order to determine whether you should include radiation in the simulation. The optical thickness of a system is defined as we see in the blue box here, where A is the absorption coefficient, sigma sub s is a scattering coefficient, which is often equal to zero, and L is the mean beam length. The absorption coefficient is a fluid property or a solid property in the case of semi-transparent solids, and it should not be confused with the absorptivity of a surface. L is a, the, the mean beam length is typically the distance between two opposing walls. If the optical thickness is zero or low, then we say that the system is optically thin. That means the fluid is transparent to the radiation at the wavelengths where the heat transfer occurs, and radiation only interacts with the boundaries of the domain. A good example of an optically thin fluid is air, which doesn't participate in radiation. If the optical thickness is large, then we say that the system is optically thick, and that means that the fluid absorbs and re-emits radiation. Examples of fluids that behave like this are combustion products or molten glass. The optical thickness plays an important part in determining your choice of radiation model. Whichever model you select has to be appropriate for the optical thickness of the system being simulated. So in this table, we summarize the models available in Fluent and their optical thickness requirements. The surface-to-surface -surface model requires the optical thickness to be zero. The solar load model also requires the optical thickness to be zero, except the insides of window panes. For the Rosslyn model, the optical thickness should be larger than about five meters. For the P1 model, it should be larger than about one meter. And for the discrete ordinates model, or DTRM, which is a ray tracing method, there's no restriction on the optical thickness, so it can go anywhere from zero to very high. In terms of accuracy, the discrete ordinates model, or DTRM, are the most accurate. But for optical thickness equals zero, the S2S model can be equally as accurate as these models. This slide contains additional guidelines relating to the compatibility of the various radiation models in Fluent with different kinds of physical processes. If you have a problem that involves scattering, that can only be accounted for with the P1 or discrete ordinance models. If you want to simulate particulate effects, where you have radiation exchange between the gas and particulates, this is only possible with the P1 and discrete ordinance models. If you have a problem that involves localized heat sources, the surface-to-surface -surface model is the best. But in the case you have a domain with an absorbing media, 
the surface-to-surface -surface model isn't applicable. So in that case, DTRM or discrete ordinates with a sufficiently large number of rays or ordinates is the most appropriate choice.